Hello there, my name is Daniel, your friendly neighborhood junior doctor, and this is a story I haven't shared on this channel before. It's the story of how I got into Edinburgh Medical School despite nine consecutive rejections. Today's story is all about rejection, and in this video, I'll be sharing with you my personal stats that I applied to medical school with. I'll talk you through the detailed feedback that I got after each med school rejection and share all the lessons that I learned along the way. But without any further ado, play that intro. So kids, Edinburgh Medical School was the best experience of my life. But the truth is, is that I barely made it in. Now, not long ago, before I became this jaded, cynical cog of the NHS system, I was just like you were, a young starry-eyed student, wondering what I should do with the rest of my life. For some background, I was 16, I went to a local comprehensive school in Bedfordshire, and I'm old enough that my GCSEs were graded with letters instead of numbers. I managed to get 7A stars and 5As, which was enough to keep my Asian parents happy, but definitely not the best GCSEs in the world, and that will be relevant later on in the story. Once I got into sixth form, I put on that grind, and I managed to get 5As at AS level. And it was coming to the end of year 12, I had my grades, and it was finally time to pick a university, but more importantly, to pick a subject. Now, I'm not someone who really grew up with a dream job. I was kind of decent at all my subjects. I was interested in a bit of everything, but I was Asian and I had straight A's and I enjoyed science and I wanted to do something that would help people. So I thought I'd give medicine a go. I mean, how hard could it be, right? Right? And if I'm being honest with myself, I know that in my first year of applying to med school, I just deep down didn't want medicine bad enough. I was just a bit wishy-washy about why I actually wanted to do medicine. 10 years later, what has changed? But yeah, I think that really came across in my medical school interviews because my answers just had very little conviction behind them. But that brings me to lesson number one of this story, which is just to make sure you actually really, really want to do medicine and can't imagine doing anything else. It's a six year course. The burnout rates are pretty astronomical. Mental health and suicide rates are pretty damn high as well. If you start med school at 17 years old, you won't make a penny for medicine until you're 23 or 24. And if you can get into medicine, I'm telling you now, you can get into a far more financially lucrative career. Now, by questioning yourself, if you really want to do medicine, despite all the things that I just said, you can work out the honest reasons that you're applying for medical school, just like I eventually did. And you can convey those answers in your interviews and your personal statement. So yeah, I decided I'll give medicine a go. I did all the usual things that you do when you're applying for medical school. I went to open days. I did work experience at GP. I wrote this absolute masterpiece of literature that I'm proud to call my personal statement. And I prepared for the application exams. BMAT, UKCAT, all of that. I used the books that everyone uses for UKAT and BMAT. They're probably the first search result if you search them up on Google. Now, in my first year of applying, I was a bit naive and I don't think I took these exams seriously enough. I ended up getting 2,570 in my UCAT that year, which was just above average. And for my BMAT, I also got a very bang average mark as well, which is not a good thing. If you're applying for med school, you'll know that the competition ratios are pretty ridiculous and you'll know that being average, unfortunately, probably isn't going to get you into med school. But I was pot committed by that point. I applied to four medical schools that year, Oxford, Birmingham, Bristol, and Leeds. And you can only pick four med schools. You have to pick a fifth backup choice that's not medicine. So I ended up picking LSE Economics, one of the most competitive courses at one of the most competitive schools as a backup fifth choice with a personal statement saying, all I wanted to do in life was be a doctor. I don't know who I thought I was, but yeah, I got rejected straight away. I think my reasoning at the time was that I didn't want to do anything besides medicine anyway. So if I didn't get medicine, I'll just reapply next year. I don't need a backup choice. I wouldn't want to do a backup choice. But lesson number two is please give yourself some options. Even if you're hundred percent sure right here, right now, in this instance, there's nothing in the world you want to do besides medicine. You might think differently in a year's time if you have four rejections in front of you and no university to go to. Spoilers like I did that year. But that LSE rejection, it didn't really phase me at the time. I wanted to do medicine and I still had four med schools waiting for me. And so starts the waiting game. You refresh student room every morning. You hear from the next school that some guy got an unconditional offer from Hogwarts. 
and every email notification sends your heart into a panic until one email actually has some useful information in it. And I'm pretty sure that the first feedback that I got from any med school was Oxford uh, telling me you're rejected. Your BMAT score was mid AF. I'll bring up the email for you. So the email told me that I was slightly above average for BMAT, but below average for GCSE. And that out of the 1500 applicants that year, I was only in the top 800. So very average. And I didn't make the cut for interviews. And then as the months went on, I got letters of rejection from Leeds and from Bristol because quite frankly, my UK CAT score was too average for me to get an interview. But eventually there was good news. I got an email from Birmingham Medical School inviting me for an interview. But now is probably a good time to bring up the fact that I suck at interviews. Like really, really suck. I honestly cannot tell you what happened in that interview. It was a out of body experience that I have very hazy memories of. I do however have the feedback um, and I scored in the bottom 25% of interview applicants. Shock horror. And you can see in the first three stations that I really was quite poor. I didn't even break the top 500 for any of those stations. But I somehow ranked top 50 in the resilience section. And that's probably because when they were grilling me, I was already dead inside. What is dead may never die! Dead may never die! So yeah, I got rejected from Birmingham Medical School despite the interview and I was pretty gutted. It was my fifth rejection of the year. I had no offers, so I wasn't going to medical school and I wasn't going to go to university at the end of the year. And after doing so well in school my whole life, being an A student, it was my first real taste of failure and rejection. I remember at the end of year 13, on my results day, I just felt so defeated because I knew that no matter what my grades were, how good they were when I opened them, I wasn't going to a university. I opened my results and I ended up getting four A stars but there was very little time to celebrate. Me and my parents were on the phone for the next three, four hours, reaching out to every UK medical school, begging to see if there were any spare spaces. And I've still got all the email receipts of them telling me, no, of course, we don't have any spaces left. And there's something very particular that I remember. It's a very petty thing to remember as well. It's that my school newsletter that week was showing all the top students who got into this uni and that uni, congratulating them on their results. But even though I got like the best grades of my year, four A stars, I didn't get a single mention uh, because I wasn't going to uni. And that just rubbed salt in the wound. But I'm a spiteful little bastard and that just made me more determined to get into medicine. Round two, fight. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. I applied for medicine again in the coming year and this time round I really upped my game. I studied like crazy for the UCAT. I went to Prague alone uh, for an open day to see if EU medical school was a good option and I wrote an even better work of literature that I titled My Personal Statement, The Sequel. And for the next eight months I started work as a full-time healthcare assistant in Watford General Hospital. And that was a really tough job. Uh, I dealt with a lot of shit, quite literally. So much shit. But I did my time. I learned what life was like in the hospital. I learned how NHS healthcare kind of works. I could talk about that in my personal statement. And yeah, I just found the motivation that I was looking for that I do want to be a doctor. And you know what? This second time round, I did so, so much better in my UCAT. I signed up for this quite expensive course ran by Kaplan in London, which ran for two days and coached you through the UCAT. And the course itself was probably okay at best. It was kind of stating obvious stuff. But the best thing about the course was that it came with this online question bank resource that you could use at home and you could practice loads and loads of questions. And I found this so much more useful than the previous books because it just gave me a feel for what the UCAT was actually like. But yeah, after all that preparation, this time round, I managed to get 3,260 on my UCAT, which if you know, you know, that is such an unbelievable increase from the previous year's 2,570. And this time around, I didn't apply for Oxbridge. I'd already been humbled by my previous experience. Oxford had literally told me my GCSEs weren't good enough for their uni. So no matter how well I did in the BMAT, it's not gonna change my GCSE results. This year, I was focused on maximizing my chances of getting in med school. I wasn't prepared to strike out again. I applied for Leeds, 
UEA, Exeter and Edinburgh. But I didn't learn from my previous lesson in this video and for my backup choice I applied for Nottingham Pharmacy which was not a good fifth backup choice because it's just way too competitive and I got, I got a rejection straight out the gates. But I was very very tactical with my medical school selection choices that year. I pretty much read through every single applicant handbook for every UK medical school and I combed through them and found out what their scoring criteria was to see if I would score highly on those criteria. You need to do your own research about which med school is best suited to your strengths and that's not something I can answer in the comments down below so do not ask me that and that's something you have to answer for yourself. For myself, I knew that I had a sick UCAT score, I knew that I had four A stars in the bag already. I knew that I had eight months full-time work experience in a hospital that no one else is going to have unless they took a gap year. And I applied to universities that valued these things and scored me highly on these things. So I managed to secure interviews at Exeter, UEA and Leeds. But going back to a previous point, I suck at interviews and I bombed each and every one of those interviews. MMI interview, bomb. Panel interviews, bomb. Again, I don't really remember what happened in those interviews. I've kind of blocked that memory out of my mind as a form of PTSD. But the important thing is that every med school that rejected me, I wrote to them asking for feedback so that I can know what I can work on for the next time. And we can look through some of that interview feedback. To quote Adam K, this is going to hurt. So UEA were pretty annoying and wouldn't give me any feedback. These were straight up brutal. They told me that I was in the top 10% for grades and top 10% for personal statement, top 10% for UCAT score, but in the bottom 20% for my interview performance. But Exeter gave me the really detailed interview feedback that I was looking for. Dear Daniel, thank you for your request for feedback. I'm sorry that on this occasion, we were unable to offer you a place on the program. You better be sorry. Panelists commented that you were well prepared, you evidenced good and thoughtful decision making. You scored well in areas concerning empathy and flexibility. However, panelists felt that it would be beneficial in interviews if you gave more eye contact and slowed your speech down. So basically what they're saying in plain speak is that I said the right things, I just didn't say it in a way that they wanted me to say it. I knew that was my problem even before I received the interview feedback. I'm just a very naturally nervous guy and I've never been the best at public speaking and I was particularly bad around that age. I remember in GCSE English, my English teacher would let me come in after school to grade my oral presentations because I just could not speak in front of the class. I would be shaking, I'd be nervous, I'd be trembling. Medical interviews kind of select for a certain type of person who is more well-spoken and more confident. And I myself have taken part in running some virtual mock interviews recently for high school students. And you can just tell apart the ones who are feeling themselves, who have that natural confidence versus the people who were like me back in the day. It's really, really hard, uh, but you have to try and be that confident guy. And if you're not that guy, then you just have to fake it for the interview. Walk it like I talk it, walk it, walk it like I talk it. Public speaking is definitely something I've worked on personally and that I feel like I've improved on. And something that's really, really helped me is just this. It's talking to a camera and then watching it back. It's going to be painful watching your own stuff back. Like no one likes the sound of their own voice but it is really great trick for learning to pick up the bad habits in your speech. You gotta pay attention to your volume, your enunciation, your talking speed, and whether you're making those arming, ring pauses. And because nowadays there's still medical schools who are running virtual video interviews, it's really useful to get good at talking to a camera anyway. Make sure you fill the screen to keep your audience engaged and learn to maintain eye contact with the camera. Unwavering eye contact. So yeah, I got rejections from all three medical schools where I did an interview, which was pretty sad. But I told you that I did my research and I knew that I sucked at interviews, which was why I applied to Edinburgh. Edinburgh was one of the three UK med schools at the time that would let you in without an interview. So they'll let any weirdo in. But then I got the final nail in the coffin. I got an email from Edinburgh saying I had an unsuccessful application. And I was really salty about this one. I was really salty. I was like, what the hell? I have the perfect application. There was only one thing that I didn't get full marks for in Edinburgh, and that was my GCSEs. You needed eight A stars to get full marks at Edinburgh, and I only had seven A stars. 
So I didn't get full academic points and I was thinking to myself, how can the fact that I didn't get an A star in GCSE religious studies be the deciding factor if I got into medical school? Uh, and this tweet that I tweeted in 2014 pretty much sums up how I felt at the time. And just like that, the dream was dead. Uh, I can honestly say I gave my all that year. I smashed the UCAT. I had the best grades. I sold my soul to Watford General Hospital for eight months. I just wasn't the guy that med school interviews wanted me to be. So I ended up applying for UCAS Extra to economics and mathematics at the University of Bristol. And I got accepted which was a pretty nice change. It wasn't a rejection for once. And I was pretty excited at the time. Like I finally got an offer. I really liked the city of Bristol. I really enjoyed economics at school. And yeah, I'd given the medicine thing a fair go. Clearly it wasn't meant to be. Finance, sure, I'll do a life of finance. I was just ready to leave home to be honest and finally get that university experience. So kids, this is the story of how I almost ended up doing economics at Bristol. But just as part of my process, I reached out to Edinburgh to ask for some feedback about why I got rejected. And they told me that I was close, that I was really close. I was in the top 450 of the applicants that year, but I wasn't in the top 350 that you needed to be to get an offer. They told me my GCSEs had let me down, but they also said that, look, if you don't hear back from any of the other med schools, let us know. We can put you on the waiting list. And that was in March. I didn't hear anything from them for the next few months. I confirmed things with Bristol. I even picked out my uni accommodation in Bristol. I was all ready to move. And then before I knew it, it was August and I got an email that I was kind of expecting from Edinburgh saying that A-level results were out, but I wasn't high enough up the waiting list to receive an offer or any spare spaces. But that was okay. Rejection was a very familiar friend by that point. I'd accepted things. Hello, darkness, my old but then, two weeks later, on the 28th of August, 2014, I got an email that I was definitely not expecting. I remember where I was at the time. I was in Paris for my cousin's wedding. I was all suited up and I was just sitting on the staircase. And then I opened up this email. Dear Daniel, I'm pleased to let you know that we are now in a position to make you an offer. I'd be grateful if you can let me know if you're wishing to accept the offer. And I hope this is good news. I look forward to hearing from you soon. This email still brings a big smile to my face. When I read it for the first time, it, I had to read it 20 times to make sure that it was legit. But it gave me such relief and such happiness when I read it. My parents were over the moon as well. Like they had prayed and supported me for the full two years. And I can't thank them enough. The offer couldn't have been any more last minute. And of, of course, I accepted it. And literally one week later, no more than seven days, I was sitting in my very first lecture of med school. And just to reiterate, med school was honestly the best time of my life. I cannot recommend it highly enough. The crazy thing to me is that if I didn't ask for feedback from Edinburgh, I might not have got the offer to be put on the waiting list. And who knows, I could be a finance guy right now. Instead, my life got flip turned within the span of one week and I went to med school. It honestly feels like a miracle to me that I got into med school. And I hope this story inspires you that if you do face rejections, you can take lessons from those rejections and you can use them to your advantage to achieve what you couldn't do before. It's all getting a little bit cheesy now. So I'll wrap it up here. Thank you very much for watching. If you've got any questions, drop them down below. But otherwise, thank you very much for watching. Like, subscribe and bye-bye.